Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. full trust and my full love and I believe you will bless me more so I can give more in Jesus name Amen When I was 17 years old, not too long ago, you know, when, when, when Didoy came in with, with a suit, you know, he can do that because he's young. I'm older, so I have to dress down. Do you like my Korean look? <laughs> yeah. I need to thank my wife. Well, so when I was 17 years old, I met for the first time, for the first time, one of my biggest spiritual mentors in my life. His name was Mike Joseph. And Mike Joseph, if you look at the photo, looks like Saddam Hussein. I would travel with him. And every time we would travel, we would go through, he would always have a very difficult time with the immigration. Can you just imagine? We're, we'd be lined up and then the immigration officer will just spot him, pull him. So we need, we need an extra R. Because they would bring him to an ante room and do, do some further questioning. He's in heaven now. And for the first time in his life, he had no problems with immigration. He holds a very special place in my heart. Mike Joseph, first time I met him, spiritual giant, a man who founded many ministries and really close to God. I came up to him as a 17-year-old kid, and I said, Mike, can you be my spiritual mentor? And he said, yes. And I was so delighted. We sat down together for the first time, and he started, you know, asking me questions about me and so on, what I was doing. And then he popped this question. Bo, do you have a girlfriend? And I smiled and I said, yes, 
just a few days ago. It was my birthday and she said yes. And I told him the cute story of how it happened. She was a member of our community. She was a member of the music ministry. Had a crush on her. And a few days before my birthday, my 17th birthday, I said, can we meet in the Pink Sisters Chapel to pray? Style. <laughs> and so she agreed. And on my birthday at the appointed time, we met. And her first question was, where are the others? And I said, it's just the two of us. I escorted her into the chapel. We knelt down. I held her hand. And then I prayed, Lord, thank you for this beautiful relationship that we are entering into. Thank you for your blessing. Amen. You know, my eyes were closed, but I knew that she was staring at me with her eyes bulging out, her jaw on the floor. And then after I said amen, she said, what just happened? And then I said, we're now boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> For some reason, she did not object. Style. <laughs> and so, I was telling this story to Mike. And Mike Joseph was just laughing and laughing. And then he tells me something unexpected. He says, Bo, I have a suggestion. At this age, at this season of your life, having an exclusive relationship will shrink your world. At a time when you should be expanding it. At this age, you should be Learning new skills, developing your craft, shaping your character, traveling, meeting new people, having many friends, serving God, growing in your spiritual life. That's where you are. So my suggestion is to give up your girlfriend for the Lord. I was there and I was looking at him and I was listening and I was nodding my head and mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Mm. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. I left the room and I told myself, I will never talk to that guy again. <laughs> How dare he say that? Hello? He does not understand my failings. <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Come on, you know? And so, I did not really go back to Mike Joseph. But then what he said was going to happen, happened. A few days after, or a few weeks after, my girlfriend called me up. And I said, hi, how are you? Fine. That's the first time I realized how to discern female vocabulary. Fine does not mean fine, right? And I said, What's wrong? And she said, you did not call me up yesterday. In fact, you did not call me the other day. In fact, you did not call me the day before the other day. And I said, why? What happened? What's wrong? And she said, hello. You're my boyfriend. So? For the first time, I realized at 17 years old that I had to call a girlfriend every day. And little by little, my, my, my world was shrinking. I want you to know, fast forward to this story. Four years later, we broke up. Did you hear me? Four years later. That's when it, we, we, we realized we were both immature. We broke up. Guess what I did? I went back to Mike Joseph. And I said, Mike, I'm back. <laughs> I did what you told me. A little bit late. <laughs> Mike was just laughing and laughing. And then we continued our spiritual mentorship. But I want to thank God. So after that, I had this long period of being single. 
And it was true. My world began to expand. We did so many things together with my friends. We built ministries together. We, we built two giant ministries, our publication ministry, which became the biggest inspirational publishing ministry in the Philippines. We, we, we built Anawim, our ministry for the abandoned elderly. During that season, it was, it was an amazing time for me. And, and I, I want you to know something. I am now, 40 years later, I want to thank God that that episode of my life happened really, really early. Ask me why. Because I learned, I learned early enough that if God wants something from you, you do not resist. You do not fight. You do not wrestle with him. You say, okay, Lord, your will be done. I, I'm telling you, by the way, there's, if, please don't get me wrong. Let me balance the equation here. It's not that I did not learn anything from my first romantic relationship, okay? I did. I did learn lots. All I'm saying is this. In my desire, I hope you're listening to me. In, in, in my desire of getting my blessing, the blessing that I want, which was a girlfriend, God could not give me the, the blessing He wanted to give me, my maturity. You see, when God says, give up this, He wants to give you something better. And so I learned a lesson very early. And that for the rest of my life, I will always remember that lesson. That when God comes to me and God says, give up your pride, give up your ambition, give up your money. <laughs> more and more, I've come to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And less and less, I have become less stubborn. And instead of wrestling for my blessing. I've made a decision. I'm going to serve others. I'm going to trust God that he's going to give me the best. And I'll give you one, you know, that was an old story 40 years ago. So I'm going to give you a recent one. Same theme. I'm an entrepreneur now for the past 20 years. And God asked me to do something that was very unique for an entrepreneur. In every transaction I will get into, God told me this. Don't make it fair. That's very difficult for an entrepreneur. In every transaction that I enter into, I felt God was telling me, don't make it fair. Make it unfair to you. In Tagalog, dapat lugi ka. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, my, my staff should have more. My customers should have more. Ako dapat lugi. I want you to know that when you, when you do that, you're not going to be rich right away. <laughs> um, but then I realized that I may not be a billionaire tomorrow. But you know what? I'll probably be the happiest entrepreneur around. And I'll end with this line. I have learned that I do not have to chase after my abundance because his abundance chases after me. I don't have to insist. I, I, I don't have to, you know, find a way to grab the blessing. No. What, what God is doing is saying, you don't have to go and, and get it and, and step on other people's toes, uh, 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 step on other people. And, and no, no, you, you, you just trust me. Trust me. And my abundance will chase after you. After this, I, I need to bring you back. Didoy Lobaton. Thank you, Brother Bo. And I can see how effortlessly you did it, even with the difference in clothes. So, 
I would like to preach on the message that says, let God win. Does that mean I forget my dreams? Does that mean I forget what I want to achieve? Does that mean I have to let go of the girlfriend or of my wife? No. Got to let God win. Oh, that's a tough one. Let's do it. Let God win. We're going to be talking about wrestling today. Uh, how many here are fans of wrestling entertainment? Yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, Shawn Michaels. Uh, yep. <laughs> I grew up at that time. I'm 1986 born. So 1990s was my coming of age and learning more about it. But, you know... Today, we're going to see the wrestling match, the grappling match between the character Jacob. Last week, Brother John was able to preach about it. And uh, as you have seen, Jacob was grappling so much, wrestling so much with his brother, Esau, and uh, not Esau. That's different. But first, you know, let's, let's, let's go through it. Let's see the timeline of his wrestling career. You have to remember all his life, Jacob, he was wrestling for a blessing. And what a hard life it would be if you're always wrestling for a blessing. There's a different alternative. In short summary, if you let God win, you will have the blessing. But let me explain it further. Jacob was fighting for the blessing in his own terms, not in God's terms. That's why he was having problems. And in the process, you hurt the people around you. And even you hurt yourself. Am I making sense here? Say yes. So first, he kept on wrestling with his brother, Esau, his twin brother. Even in the womb of his mother, he, he grabbed. He was grappling the heel of Esau. So he would want to be first. He, ha, he had wrestled for the birthright for a bowl of beans. There, there's, a, there's a trickery that happened so that he got the birthright from Esau. And later, you know, Jacob hijacks Isaac, his father, who was going to bestow the blessing on Esau, but he got it anyway. But it could have been all good right after. No. When Esau learned about Jacob cheating on him again, he, Esau, his twin brother, grew a great hatred for him. Nagalit siya. And he wanted to kill his twin brother. These are ancient times, ancient context. Don't do that today. And hearing about this, when there was a threat for his life from his own twin brother, fight, flight, or freeze is the usual stress response. I'm a doctor anyway, so... There, what he chose was to flee. Flight was his uh, defense mechanism. And, and he was able to run away. He ran away to his uncle. The uncle's name is Laban. Everybody say Laban. Yes, the Filipino word Laban. Yes. He, how sad and ironic. Remember this. Uh, this is so sad and ironic for Jacob. Jacob, he went to grab the birthright. He went to grab the blessing, grappled for the blessing, wrestled for the blessing. And yet, he got it. Yes or no? But did he enjoy the blessing? Never. He never enjoyed it. He wasn't able to enjoy it because he was always on the run from Esau's wrath. He did not have it right. My friend, here's a good lesson. In life, it is possible to get what you want. Yeah? And not what you got. And not want what you got because you got it in the wrong way. Let me say that again. Let's say it together if it's flashed on the screen. It's possible to get what you want and not want what you got because you got it the wrong way. You got the money, but you're not happy because you got it the wrong way. You got the girls, you got the boy, but somewhere along the line, it doesn't feel right because something wrong happened along the way. And sometimes, blessings 
becomes our curse. It's because on how we got them. I want you to reflect on that, please. And the only way to truly enjoy a blessing is to receive it according to God's ways and according to God's time. I can see your eyes grappling with that truth. Go ahead and wrestle with the Lord today. <laughs> we want to submit to God's sovereignty. We want to let Him win. And you think Jacob is done wrestling with Esau, his brother. No. He faced more wrestling opponents. And I mentioned his name earlier, Laban. His uncle became his father-in-law. Here's the story. Jacob falls in love with a woman named Rachel, the daughter of Laban. You getting it? He asks Laban for her hand in marriage. And Laban agrees. But that's how the world works. Sometimes there's always a but. But in return, he asks Jacob for a dowry. A very expensive dowry. And what was that? He asks Jacob to work for him for seven long years so that you could have Rachel. And because of love, I will do anything for love, Jacob says. He did not say it in the text, but he agreed with that terms. Seven years. Hmm. Some people can't even work in a company for a year or two, yes? <laughs> Reality check. But Jacob, out of his love, he says yes. And so after working for Laban for seven long years, he was ready to claim his prize. Welding bells rang in the air, but something goes wrong. And here comes the text from Genesis 29, verse 22 to 29. So, okay, here we go. So Laban, there was a wedding, invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob, not Rachel. And he slept with her. But in the morning, when Jacob woke up, it was Leah. What have you done to me? Jacob raged at Laban. I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? During the ancient times, brides wore veils. So you trust that that's the person you really intended to marry. But there was deception. Ooh, so true until this time. The swindler was swindled. It's a prank. The prankster got pranked. He met his match. Oh, how ironic. Wrestling match. Are you getting me? Remember how Jacob disguised himself to deceive his father Isaac? It was Laban who disguised his daughter Leah to pretend that she was racial. And Jacob <laughs> got a dose of his own medicine. I want you to take a pause here. Have you ever met your match? Did you sometimes get your own medicine? Take a look. There are still parallels from the ancient times still happening until today. But the story is not done yet. Still full of ups and downs and wrestling matches. But I want you to take a pause. Does it still ring true to your life now? Our preaching comes from the truth of the word of the Lord. And the truth is still relevant and present even up to this time. Let me continue. This is a family of angry little wrestlers. Laban was not done yet. He, do he wasn't done scheming Jacob. So here it is. Let me continue on verse 26 to 27. It's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn, 
Laban replied to Jacob, But wait until the bridal week is over and we'll give you Rachel. We'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise, da -da -da, you promise to work for another seven years for me. That's a technicality. And Laban used that to manipulate Jacob. He must be a very good worker. He must be a very high performer, yeah? He must be a very cherished person in the industry of that place. That he was able, you know, <clears throat> Laban was scheming enough, cunning enough to say, come work for me for another seven years. And what did, what did Jacob do? He did. <laughs> Because of love. He did. He, he, he worked for Laban for another seven years for a total of seven plus seven, 14 years. And, you know, again, a note. In that ancient culture, multiple wives were allowed at that time. That's another story to preach on another time, not at this time. But in the next 20 years, Jacob and his father-in-law, Laban, they would continue to deceive each other, wrestle with one another many, many ways. What a horrible relationship. Kawaii, kawaii. Anybody could feel that in your in-laws? Not, not mine. <laughs> Sometimes. No, no. If, if, it's, if it isn't bad enough, Jacob ends up with four wives. It's a very, very... You read the whole book. And remember, by the way, this is not going to be taken literally. It's not a historical book. It's not history. It's a literary piece. It's literature. Don't take it literally. Okay? You can read it not literally, but literarily. It's a literature book. So let's, let's dive in, break down into pieces, and let's get the essence, not on the word-per-word -word piece that you are usually looking into any work of words put together. Are you there with me? So, if it wasn't bad enough, Jacob had four wives, and all these wives were quarreling with one another. You know, who would be the matriarch? Who would be the number one love? And these wives even compete on how many babies they can produce. Horrible. It was hard. It's crazy. We just came from Abraham two weeks ago and now we're talking about Jacob. You know, but the Bible characters get, keep on getting worse and worse. Yeah. Just like you and me sometimes. You can relate that we're, you know, ending is Jacob would have 12 sons. Woohoo. Four wives, 12 sons. Wow. But they too, those 12 sons, kept on fighting one another. And this is no surprise. Kanina pa sila nagmana. <laughs> the father, the in-law. There was so much scheming. There was so much deception. And there was so much fighting that nobody's winning. Are you with me? There was so much fighting that nobody was winning. And where did, it all, where did all this conflict start? Where did it all fighting start? It was from Jacob's failure to trust God. He, he kept seizing the blessing by force at the expense of others. He kept on having his own way and not letting God have God's way. That's the problem. We reap what we sow. When we, took, when we take matters into our own hands, we hurt ourselves. And in the process, we hurt people too. Sometimes, God will allow you to get the taste of your own poison to wake you up from the evil that you're doing. Sometimes. But trust God's heart. God is still good. God is still in charge. Despite all of these family feuds, wrestling matches within a family, even in all these toxicity, God formed the family into a nation, by the way. He chose the nation of Israel out of this family mess, became the chosen sons 
the 12 sons of Jacob became the 12 tribes of Israel. And I want to preach hope today. The hope is, even if you are in a mess, God is working through you, with you, and in you. Even through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because He wants to fulfill His purpose for your life. He's not done with you yet. Difficulty? You let God win. He has a plan for you. Gotta remember that. Maybe this is one person's take home today. You've come here messed up. You've come here very sinful. You've come here... <sighs> but you take home hope with you. That even in the wrestling matches of your life, you end up winning. How? You let God win. So finally, Jacob submits, but not yet. There was one more adversary. We were talking about Jacob with Esau, Jacob with Laban. But today, here, Jacob faces another match. As we continue with the story, this time, there wasn't no trickery. Jacob met the truth. And this is one of the strangest stories in the Bible. So come with me and let's read what happens from Genesis 32, verse 24 to 25. A man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he could not win the match, he touched. Everybody say touched. <laughs> He touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of his socket. Who is this man? What does this wrestling match mean? Hmm. At the end of the story, it is in the astounding turn of events, we will see that this man turns out to be God himself. Jacob wrestled with God. Wild. If this was in now terms, this is like the grandest wrestling match of all time. Better than Steve Stone Cold, Steve Austin, more than anything else. What does this wrestling mean? Again, it's literature, not to be taken literally. And what does this wrestling mean? So let's face it. It's not easy to deal with God. He wants us, His purpose is for us to be fully alive, to live the life that God has, that He has promised. But remember that in our short-sightedness, we want something else apart from God's plan. And that destroys us and the people around us. And so, when we do not get our way, we fight God. That's how problematic we are. <laughs> we fight the source of the blessings. We try to free ourselves from God and force our own way, to have our own way, even if it hurts us in the process. In Tagalog terms, pumipiglas kasi tayo. I'm a father of kids, five and three, Haley and Hosea, and I'm a father who just allows the kids to run around, be free. And sometimes when I see danger, I would call them, Haley, Hosea, wait, or do not go there. And sometimes you'll see the kids. <laughs> he or she hurts, hurts himself or herself, despite my warnings. That's just who we are sometimes. Sometimes we're not that mature yet enough. We are children of God anyway. And what a patient father we still have. If we weren't sinners, if we didn't want to have our own way apart from God's way, we wouldn't have to wrestle. We would dance with the Lord. And we would walk in harmony with Him. But because we're sinners, we fail. It's already there 
plans of God, God's ways, if we just follow, we will win. But we're losing because we're fighting. In Tagalog, nagmamarunong tayo. Nilalabanan natin siya. Pumipiglas tayo. Kaya tayo natatalo. Today, I'm encouraging you, let God win. Stop fighting. Because we all, when we fight, we end up getting wounded. And we also hurt the people around us. Not because of God, but because we do, we do it to ourselves. In our stubbornness, we get hurt. Sometimes, sometimes God has to do something extreme just to get our attention. Sometimes, remember this, God has to break us where we are strongest so that we can learn to trust Him. So let me continue with the story. Jacob doesn't want God to win in that wrestling match. He keeps fighting God even until the break of dawn. So God does this. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Why? Again, it's literature. Don't take it literally. Can a man unhinge a hip from its socket? Bible scholars, this is very important for our better understanding. Bible scholars would believe that God hit him on the, on the groin, which is within the area of the hip. Because of that's the biological source of his fruitfulness. The seed of the man comes from the groin and it got hurt because it wasn't doing well for him. Are you with me? The source of his fruitfulness. Because of Jacob's lack of trust and always taking matters in his hands, God wounded him. God wounded him in the place where he can generate his own blessing. And sometimes again, God breaks us where we are at our strongest so that we can eventually listen because we're hurting ourselves so that we can learn to trust Him. Here's, here's, I want you to think this way. Sometimes sin, wrongdoing, it's so deeply ingrained in us, in our lifestyle, that God has to do some spiritual surgery. And yes, it hurts. I'm a doctor. I've done some surgeries. I've seen surgeries done. Surgeries, minor and small, they leave scars, right? Surgeries are expensive, yes? But if you do not do the surgery, the whole being, the whole body may fail and get hurt. And that's why sometimes God allows us to get hurt because God wants to heal us. He allows the hurting because His purpose is for our healing. Jacob's wrestling match with God was God healing him and blessing him again. He ends up with a limp. Bishop Robert Barron said this. This is very nice. Listen to this. A holy person is someone who has a limp from a struggle with God. I feel like I'm losing you and you're... I want to give an illustration. Again, I was born in 1986, so I grew up in the 90s. And you'll know our age already because during that 90s, na uso, it was common to have ballroom dancing, yes? In parties, there were ballroom dancing clubs. You, you don't remember? Hmm? And there were parties at home and in, in, in different places where it was common at that time to have dan dance instructors or DIs, yes? And I got to learn how to, you know, if you really know me, you know that I do not dance. I cannot. 
my left foot cannot align with my left foot. It's all left, okay? <laughs> I really cannot dance. So imagine when my mom and my dad encouraged me, go ahead, Dido, I try to dance. And I was like, what? I tried. And this is a wrestling match with the dance instructor. <laughs> because she was saying with me, okay, do this and do that. And I was like, and her hands were so strong and she was really, I was really fighting and I'm stumbling because we're doing that simple cha-cha and I cannot get it. And, 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 you know, I was hurting myself. And then she said something beautiful that I'll never forget. She said, Didoy, in Tagalog muna. Andy, just wait a minute. Sabi niya, Didoy, Kalimutan ko na. <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> she said something like, I don't even fully remember. She said something, Didoy, sumunod ka lang. Huwag kang lumaban. Didoy, huwag mo nang labanan. Sundan mo na lang. In English, Andy, Didoy, don't fight me. Flow with me. And so, I started trusting that she will not make me fall. And I trusted her maneuvers that she was leading. She's a dance instructor anywhere. I, was, I realized I did not want to be instructed, but I had to. So that I can eventually learn how to dance. Wow. It feels so good. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's good. Oh, good. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I'll do anything to preach the word of the Lord. And then and there's... Then there's... <laughs> more... Let's stop the wrestling match now. Oh. Stop fighting. Start flowing with God. We need to tap out. In a wrestling match, it ends when someone taps out. And it's okay. It's okay to, to tap out. It's, it's like waving the white flag in surrender. I want to stop the battle. Let's stop the war. Let's sign the peace agreement. I'm tapping out. And at the end of this wrestling match, Jacob taps out. And he does it in a very, very unique way. Jacob realized that he was wrestling with God and he seeks a blessing from him. Not from anyone else. So here's the word from verse 26 to 29. Then the man said, let me go. Read it with me. Let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Here it is. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name, the man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Can I ask you to stand, please? A very colorful life. Too many wrestling matches. Jacob must be so weary after all the wrestling matches. So many heartaches. If you really go through the text, so hard life. And yet, at the end, a nation was born out of him. 
Jacob let God win. Jacob submits, taps out, and say, You are God who provides. You are a God who heals. Oh, I let you win. By asking God for His blessing, He, he, he says, I'm now willing to trust you, God. And I want to receive the blessing from you. It, the blessing will not come from me anymore. I will not carve out my own blessing. He wrestled with the blesser. So God blesses him and changes his name. Here it is. God renames Jacob, which meant heel grabber or deceiver. From Jacob, the heel grabber or deceiver, Jacob became Israel, which means one who struggled with God and wins. When you let God win, you win too. That's it. You let God win so that you win too. His win is your win because He is for you, not against you. He builds you up, then breaks you down. You got to trust Him. Start dancing with Him than struggling and wrestling with Him. He wants to prosper you. My dear friends, do you still have some strongholds in your life? Pride, unforgiveness, selfishness. Today we say, Lord, I surrender this to you. Let, I'll let you in. I cannot win this battle all by myself. I cannot do it on your, my own. Maybe you're struggling in your business and in your workplace, in your career, in your relationships, in your finances. Let God win. Do not fall into breaking the integrity just so you can cheat your way out and get that money get that fame, that fortune, get that status, and yet you do not enjoy it. It wreaks more havoc in your life. Stop pretending that you are winning. Start trusting and you let God win so that you may win. Instead of taking matters in your own hands, Surrender matters to God's hands and He will make a way for you. Always and forever. Again, when you let God win, in the end, you win too. Is there something that God asks you and you got reminded today to surrender, to let go and let God, to release so God can give you His peace. Two weeks ago, we talked about Abraham and very sinful man and yet blessed the nations because of him. And if we thought that Abraham was so bad, now we realize that his grandson, Jacob, is worse. <laughs> and at various times, remember how, I want you to see how God is. Know who God is. In this generation upon generation, worsening of the generations, God could have, could have abandoned Jacob and the whole family. But he is a promise keeper. Remember that. God is a promise keeper. God could have just walked away from giving you the blessing. Sobra ka na. You've, you had, you're too much. But in the story of Jacob, instead of God abandoning him, 
God wrestles with him. Do you feel that God is wrestling with you? It's because God is not abandoning you. He wants you. He's not done with you yet. And sometimes it hurts because God wants you to heal. God will never give up on you. That is why Jesus came into our lives. Instead of leaving us, God, Jesus became man to wrestle with our sin and strangle death on the cross. Like Jacob, Jesus is the wounded one. But unlike Jacob, who got wounded because of his sins, Jesus was wounded because of our sins. What a God we serve. What a loving God. Wow. If it's okay with you, can you just come into prayer close your eyes if you will come into a prayer posture we're gonna sing a song now but as we go through it i want you to have that moment with jesus right here right now come to jesus now in all these years god has been grabbing you lord many many years I've been wrestling with you. And you could have just abandoned me. You could have just left me to die and to get ruined. But here today, I remember that you are grabbing me. Even if I want to run away from you. All these years, I've been wrestling with you. Today, I'm going to stop fighting you. I want to flow with you, Lord. I finally tap out and say, and surrender. You win, Lord. You win. You win. Amen. It is so beautiful to be in the presence of God. And can we pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I want you just to lift up to Him all your needs. Whatever you're going through, He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're coming from. He knows the burdens of your heart. Just, just bring it up to God and say, Lord, I surrender everything that all hurt and all pain and all worries and all fear. Lift them all up to you, Lord. I surrender them to you. You are my king and you are the center of my life. And I trust you and I know that you are blessing me right now. I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Live a fantastic life.